Have you ever experienced this phenomenon? You're having a conversation in person with a friend or maybe a family member about some random topic. And then later on in the day, you get online and let's say maybe you're scrolling through your Facebook feed and you happen to click on a local news story. And when you go to the site that has the local news story, you're served ads for the thing that you had talked about, let's say at lunch with your friend. This has happened to so many people. Almost everyone that I know has had this experience. And every time it happens, they say something like, oh, I think my phone must be listening to me. It must be hearing my conversation through the microphone. I must be being spied on. Well, they're half right. Certainly your device and the platforms that you are on are listening to you. But it's a lot more disturbing what's actually going on. What it's a signal of is that you are smack dab in the middle of the attention economy. So this is the next part in my attention economy series. If you have not seen the first video, go ahead and jump back and check that out. These videos are meant to be watched in order. If you hear some things in the background, some noise, I'm actually out on my deck. It's sort of beautiful here on the island of Saipan. So we've had a storm come through and you may be listening to the island start to wake up. It's morning time here. So if you hear some things in the background, just so that you know what's going on. So let's talk a little bit about why this is all important. Why the topics that I'm bringing up matter. Uh, there is a natural reaction, especially for those of us who may be a little bit older, to say, as a response to some of the topics that I'm bringing up, oh, everything's the same. How is anything different? Nothing has changed. And this is a very normal human response. And I would call it a frog in the pot. Boil frog in a boiling pot response. So basically the frog in the pot phenomenon is... If you have a, a pot of boiling water and you throw a frog in there, he'll jump out immediately. It's hot. He notices the change. But if you put a frog in a room temperature water and then slowly heat it up to a boil, he will comfortably sit in there until he's boiled alive. So what has happened, what has happened, the change that has happened that has brought us into the attention economy, that has made you a product, remember, if you're not paying for the service, you are the product that has made you a product and soon to be something closer to livestock in this system has been a, a slow boil, a process that is a slow boil. So let's talk about how we got here. That's going to be very important as we move forward. So how do we get to a place? How do we get to a place where the systems that are serving you advertisements have a, a an almost a, a sort of clairvoyance to where they can tell what it is that you are looking to buy and know they're not listening in on your conversation. The microphone is not turned on. Again, it's even it's even crazier than that. So how does this all start? Well, in order to see how it starts, we've got to see how the proto-attention economy happens. And again, as we talked about, it's all about a business model of serving ads. This is all a logical progression of a business model of serving advertisements to people. So advertising has been around since we've had mass media. But this particular vein of it, this particular business model that is really fully ad-driven, only comes about with the advent of radio and then television. Basically, we have this awesome technology where we can, out into the airwaves, out into the ether, we can send this signal. How do we monetize it? How do we turn this into a business? Well, we've got people's eyeballs. There are people who might want to speak to these people, right? We have their ears with radio. We've got their eyeballs and their ears with television. There are entities that might want to speak with them. It's expensive to run these transmitters. It's expensive to run the operation. It's expensive to get the licensing later. How do we make some money off of this? And so advertising makes total sense. And in the early days of radio, in the early days of television, the advertisers are actually really driving even what content is going to be put out. It's why we have 
soap operas. This is content where it was actually the soap companies that were fully paying for the content to be made. And that was in the early days you would have a show that was fully paid for, brought to you by such and such company. It would be one company, and they this would be a one long advertisement that basically had some content inside of it. And because everybody was listening, you got this really homogenized version. Start We started to have this initial feedback loop where the culture was homogenized because everybody was consuming basically the same thing because they were being marketed to on the same things. Now, as time went on, you got more television channels, you got more radio stations, you got more periodicals and newspapers of different kinds. And so they started to split off into demographics because advertisers said, well, maybe I don't want the soap thing. Maybe I want to hit fishermen or car enthusiasts. I sell car products. And so we would have a, a car magazine or potentially a car channel or a fishing channel as things went on. Right? So it gets more and more diversified because we have more and more diverse advertisers. And when I was a kid, man, there were all kinds of magazines of all different kinds, and that's what you would go after. And if you wanted to purchase something, even not a big advertiser, but let's say you wanted a new car, you would go to the auto trader, right? And you would purchase that. Purchase an auto trader, and you would see all the people who had made ads. When the Internet came about, in the early days of the Internet, what you had was basically a view that, hey, we've got the same sort of business model. And so if you had a website, let's say like bodybuilding, bodybuilding.com, which was a, a big forum popular in the early days of the web, even in web 1.0, had millions of people there. If I've got a fitness product, I might buy a banner ad up at the top. Then what we had was we had ad agencies that would start to serve lots of different ads. I would just, if I'm a website uh, owner, I would just say, this is the type of demographic that I have. I'm going to embed some ads, and I would get paid per view, per thousand views, or per click, or per action that would happen. Google started to change a lot of this. So when Google comes along, Google figures out that they basically blow up the ad paradigm, where they're going to serve ads and let you buy ads for people who are looking for specific things. AdWords. If I, I, I sell bicycles, I could buy against the word bicycle every time that that served. From there, we move even forward to where it's not just what I'm searching for, but they're also going to start embedding tracking to see what I'm looking at. And this extends now to the point where it's extended to all the things that you're looking at on social media, all of the things that you're looking at in terms of videos, all of the websites that you are visiting. All of these things are there, and it's tracking you. It's seeing so that it can put together, this algorithm is putting together, which we'll talk about in the next video, this algorithm is putting together a profile of you down to the point where the algorithm actually knows what it is that you will be talking to. It can predict what it is that you will be talking about, because where your attention is, what it is that you'll be talking about at lunch with your friend, because it's what you've been thinking about all day, and it's been tracking your attention as you've scrolled and moved around. So we're feeding this in. And if we've reached a point where the machine is more aware of our desires, is more aware of where our attention is than we are, we are in a very dangerous place. So we're going to talk about these algorithms in the next video, that's what we're going to talk about is what I will call the algorithm because it's the idea of the algorithm and where it's come to and our interaction with it. From there, we're going to talk about how this feedback loop is, is altering our entire world, is altering our culture, and then what artificial intelligence coming online and being able to interact with us within the algorithm actually means. All right. So maybe another day or two, maybe we'll do another video tomorrow. Thanks for checking this out again. If you haven't watched the first video, go back and watch that. I don't know how long this series will be, but thanks for checking it out, and I will see you on the next one.